Hello, this is Faye from Knit It, Hook It, Craft It. I want to take you through how I block my projects. I'm going to start with the equipment that I use and I'll take you through it in order of usage. I wash my projects in an organic wool wash bar which has lanolin in it. I also use an old towel for taking excess water out of the project. I use black enamelled blocking pins to secure the item down on the blocking boards. Generally use a couple of hundred for a shawl. A good quality measuring tape that's quite sturdy. And also some finishing needles, so a tapestry needle. I don't weave in ends until I have finished blocking and the item is dry. Let's crack on and I'll show you how I wet block items. I use about two litres of lukewarm water when I'm blocking a shawl and that's what I'm going to use as my example project today. The water is lukewarm because I don't want to start felting the wool in any way. And then all I do is take my wool wash bar and place it in the water and use the same action that I would if I was using a bar of soap to wash my hands. And just give it a few rubs and take it back out. Make sure that the soap is dispersed throughout the water. You'll see it's changed a slightly different colour and that just shows that the soap is in there. The item that I'm blocking today is a shawl. So I'm going to pop that into the water. And submerge it. And all I'm doing is gently pushing down, trying to get the air out and the water in. I'm not agitating the shawl in any way or the wool. I just want to make sure that that soap is getting into it. I'm not rubbing it. I'm not doing that kind of an action that you would if you were maybe washing your clothes by hand. Just very gently dealing with the shawl and trying not to felt the wool. And then the process is quite simple. I'm going to leave it there for 20 minutes. After about 10 minutes, I might just turn it over so that these areas that aren't submerged are flipped over. So 10 minutes is up. Let's turn it over and do the same. Just gently pushing down. And leave it for another 10 minutes. So that shawl has now been soaking for 20 minutes and it's time to get it out of the water. And you can see there's still a little bit of unexhausted dye in there. You can see it has a slightly golden tinge to it. And also some of the dirt has come out of the wool as well. Now this is one of the main reasons I tend to wet block everything is because yarn has gone through an industrial process and by that very nature it means that there is dirt in the yarn. So before I wear my final project or pass it on to somebody I want to make sure that it's clean. Get rid of this water. Get a gentle stream of water running and make sure it's lukewarm because again you don't want to have the water too hot and start to felt your wool or your yarn. And then all I'm doing is just very gently giving a rinse, pushing down on it very gently. I'm not rubbing, I'm not really agitating the wool in any way. I'm just rinsing it out. And you can see that that water is now running clean. So I will turn the tap off. 
The next thing that I tend to do is fold the project up. And then again, I'm not wringing it. I'm gently just squeezing the excess out, turning it over and squeezing excess water out. When I feel like I can't get any more out, then it's time to come away from the sink and make use of the old towel. So you can see that I have laid out the old towel and placed one half of the shawl onto it. And then all I'm going to do is wrap the towel over and lay the other part of the shawl on top of that which means that hopefully what you don't have is the shawl resting on the shawl itself. In between you've got layers of towel, shawl, towel, shawl. And then all I'm going to do is turn it around because what I want to do is start rolling it up, but again making sure that it's shawled towel. Move it down, make sure it's as flattened out as possible. The next job is to put your rolled up towel onto the floor and stand on it. This won't damage your project, I promise. Jump on it if you like. Turn it over and do the other side. And this will take all of the excess liquid out and you'll end up with wet feet. So we've washed the shawl, we've stood on it on a towel and now it's time to lay it out on the blocking mats. I tend to do this job on our kitchen worktop. I'm in my kitchen now so you might hear the fridge go in a moment. Um, what that means is that I can stand up to block so I'm not kneeling, I'm not scrubbing about on the floor. It just, I find it just makes the whole job a lot easier. I've arranged the shawl on the blocking mats and I've used six mats in total. The reality is I'm probably not going to need these two. So four mats would have done for this job. Um, and I've played about and this is I think the best position that I can put the shawl into for blocking. Now what I want to do is take what is a straight edged shawl and introduce this curve into it so it can get a really lovely sweep. And to do that, that means that this is the edge that I'm going to pin down first. So let's start with that. I'm using size 4 blocking pins and I've got two packs out already because I suspect I'll need both packs. with I'm leaving reasonably large spaces of about eight centimeters in between each pin and you can see that I'm smoothing the fabric along and I'm also putting the pin in at an angle and keep on doing that until I've got to the other end There we go. So I'm just now going to assess that. I think I've got quite a nice even sweep in there. And the reason for only putting my pins this far apart to begin with is because when I start pulling down on this side, it might make this bevel. So I may still alter this edge. So there's no point in putting 
50 pins in if I'm going to have to take 50 pins back out. Now what I'm going to do is quickly turn it around so that you can see how I would do the next part. So we've got the sweep and now what I want to concentrate on are the teeth of the shawl. And I'm going to start in what is the deepest part Move some pins over and I'm going to pin down on each of the corners there. And all I'm doing is smoothing out the fabric to make sure that I've got it as I want it. Smoothing it out. I'm pulling out the tooth and putting the pin in. And the pin is always going in diagonally and towards me. As you would do if you're putting a tent peg in. More smoothing. And can you see how this is pulling already? And this is what happens if you don't use enough pins. And that's how you get that beveled edge on your project. But I'll show you how to deal with that. You see how the lace is starting to pull out and get more definition? So I've blocked out all of the teeth on the bottom edge of the shawl and what I want to do is come back and check the top edge. And I think that's probably pulling a little too tightly. You can see how it's beveling there. And I could address that if I put lots of pins in, but as the piece dries, it will naturally contract anyway and that you will still get that little bit of beveling. So once I have done both edges, I tend to then just come back, take the pin back out and place it in so I'm not getting that pull. And I've still got that lovely sweep going through the shawl, but I'm not pulling the yarn too much. I'm not trying to make it do something that it doesn't want to do. And then the next part is to add some more pins in to completely secure it down. And this is where I tend to do more than most people. I add a lot more pins in. Partly because I have a cat who thinks it's his given right to try and annoy my blocking process and move shawls. it. I'm now happy with that top edge. I don't have any of that beveling going on. It's got a nice gentle sweep to it. All of the teeth are clearly defined. I feel like the lace work is defined as well. That's that project ready to dry off. So what I would tend to do is leave this for probably about 16 hours and then come back. And as I said, as it dries, Sometimes that action can pull down on this a little and then what I tend to do is just check the pins and move them down a little if I have to. Let's turn it around so you can see how it looks the right way up. So you can see really lovely sweep in it. I've used the best part of 200 pins to block that shawl out and that's fairly standard for me. So let's let this um, let this dry. As I said, the beauty of these blocking mats is that because they're large and thick, it makes for a very portable project. So I'm going to move this out and it's going to go to my living room to dry.
I blocked this shawl yesterday afternoon. I've left it overnight to dry. It's still damp to touch. And what I'm checking for now is to see if it's beveling at the edge anywhere because as the yarn dries, it contracts a little and that can lead to a pulling on that leads to a beveled edge. Now that isn't actually happening on this one because I didn't block it aggressively, I didn't need to, but had I done that and I was left with this scalloped beveled edge to it, then all I would do is take the pins out, let the yarn naturally ping back a little and then replace the pin. And I would do that whilst it's still damp to touch so that in the final set, as it dries 100%, you're not encouraging that kink in your edges. So this is going back into my living room to do its final piece of drawing and then the next part I'll show you is when I'm taking the pins out and weaving in the ends. So this has now been drawing for about 48 hours. It's completely dry to touch. Um, I felt underneath as well and it's ready for me to take all of the pins out and lift it up which would just leave me the job of weaving in the ends and then wearing it. So, let's get on with it. One of the reasons I like these pins is because they pull out really easily. I find the ones with the big plastic bits on the end, and sometimes they're the shape of a flower or stars, and it makes it more difficult to pull the pins out, whereas these are really quick and you don't leave any big holes in your work. We can show you that this was one big straight edge and you can see how much of a curve <coughs> blocking has put into it and what that means is that it will fit and um, shaped really nicely around your neck. So all that remains for me to do now is to weave in the ends and then that's the process done and dusted. That's the blocking finished and I'll be ready to wear the shawl. The final part of blocking your project is to weave in the ends. It's a good idea to choose the right needle size for this. The ones that I have here are large wool needle, which is too big for this project, a size 14 metal tapestry needle, 18 and uh, 20. It's important to use one with a blunt end because that way it's unlikely that you're going to affect your project by potentially splitting the yarn. The one that I'm going to use for this one is the smallest, which is the size 20. So this is a four ply yarn that I'd used for this shawl. And the quick way to thread a needle is to double it over in your hand, get the yarn so that it's pinched in between your thumb and your index finger and push the needle down towards it and on it pops. Ready for me to do the weaving in. So what I would suggest is you find what you prefer as your right side or your wrong side. Although with the way that you weave in it really wouldn't matter because it should be pretty much invisible. And what I'm looking to do is chase the stitches that are already there. So I'm going down through the line of double crochets that I have. Just a few stitches and then gently pulling through. I don't want to yank on it, I don't want to tug it just want to make sure that it's nice and even. And then turn the work a little and instead of going back through the way that I've just come what I want to do is overlap that one stitch and then go back through. 
which secures down my original pull through. And again, gently, you don't want to yank it because you don't want to create an issue with tension. And then do the same again. So rather than coming back through the stitches that have just come, overlap through one. And that's it. Pull that through. And then get ready to cut it off. Using a good pair of sharp scissors, making sure that you're not going to cut the other yarn within your project. I use it and um, pressure down on my um, middle finger and cut and that way I know that I'm applying the right pressure not going through to the yarn. I wouldn't go in like that with the points of the scissors. So that's the first end woven in and you can't see front or back, it wouldn't really matter. You can't see where the end has been woven in. I'll do another one quickly, this one up at the end. Let's show you a quick technique. Let's say, let me cut this. Let's say I didn't leave enough of an end on this one to be able to thread it and pull the needle through. So let's cut this to show you what I mean. So if I was to thread that, there's not enough yarn for me to manoeuvre with. So what I want to do instead is, as I would, if I had enough yarn, start to place the needle through the area that I want it to go through. And then thread your yarn through and pull. This does make it slightly more difficult and I quite often see that people haven't left enough of a yarn tail. I generally try and leave about 10 centimetres. Then I'm going to do the same. So I don't want to go back through that stitch. I want to come over one. And it does get more difficult the less yarn that you have. a good reason to make sure you leave enough tail. So that's just in there and you're going to have to give it a little tug and then pull your work back through and that end has now gone. But to avoid that leave yourself enough of a yarn tail. It doesn't have to be massive, like I say just about 10 centimetres should do it. Here's a little more detail on the blocking equipment that I sell at Knit It, Hook It, Craft It. The wool wash bars are organic. They have lanolin in them, which helps to recondition your wool. Made in the UK, and the one that I've used in this demonstration is lavender scented. I use lavender products a lot for my blocking and in and around my stash because Moths don't like the scent of lavender and they're very scent sensitive so most of my projects end up smelling of lavender. But I sell the organic wool wash bars in various different scents and each bar will wash over 235 shawls so it's a really good quality UK made value for money product. Next up are the blocking mats. Now these ones are actually manufactured in England. They're made from EVA foam, which is non-porous, and is also 100% non-toxic and formamide free. A lot of the blocking mats that you can buy from other suppliers are actually quite a bit thinner than the ones that I sell. These ones are 1.5 centimetres thick, whereas the average market ones are less than a centimetre. And what that means is you're less likely to have your blocking pins go through the mat and therefore potentially scratch your tabletop or your work surface. That also means that because they're larger and thicker, they're more portable. So once you have your work on your blocking mats pinned down, you can actually easily move them from room to room. I do that quite often. So if there's a good drying day, 
I would move my blocking project outside because they'll dry more quickly. The real beauty for me of these blocking mats is that they have the sidebars. Each mat comes with two of the sidebars, which means that if you buy a set, which is two blocking mats, then your overall surface area is 106 centimetres by 54. If you wanted to block a larger project, like a long shawl or a cardigan or a jumper, then you would need four of these blocking mats. The next essential item for blocking are your pins. The ones that I sell are black enamelled and I've tested them for rusting and they don't rust, they're really good quality. I get them direct from the manufacturer in the Czech Republic, which is why I'm able to offer them at such a good price. I have them in three sizes, size 2, size 4 and size 7. And to give you a quick reckoning on, on what I would use those for, the size 2 are really good for blocking out lace projects. They're a little bit thinner at 0.45 millimetres and they're 38 millimetres long. And because they're thinner, it means that they're less likely to split your lace yarn that you've used. The next size up is a size 4 and they are also 38 millimetres long but they're 0.55 millimetres thick. For me the size 4 is a really good all-round blocking pin. It will do chunkier yarn, it will do your lace, so if you only want to buy one thickness the size 4 is your good general all-rounder. The next size up is the 7 and that's a longer pin. It's 52 millimetres, it's also slightly thicker at 0.65 millimetres. For me this is the one that you use for chunky blankets or something that you need to block very aggressively. It's also helpful if you do a lot of work with cotton because if you do you know that it can be very difficult to get a pin through cotton. So a chunkier pin like the size 7 is what you need. One of the things that I see most often when people are blocking their projects is that they tend not to have enough pins and therefore they don't use enough pins and that can lead to a wavy beveled edge on your project. And I think if you've spent so long crocheting or knitting your item it's a shame to then not have the tools at hand to do a proper job in blocking them. On a standard sized shawl I can use anything up to 200 pins. So that would be two packs of these, each the size 7, 4 and 2, each pack has 100 pins. The next thing that I tend to use when I'm blocking is a really good quality measuring tape. I block things to the extremes, I will measure elements out. If I've done a garment I will make sure that the sides are exactly the same length. So a good quality, thick, stable measuring tape is an essential item for me. This one that I sell is by Merchant and Mills and it's actually manufactured in Germany. It doesn't get affected by the water in the projects I'm blocking because it has a plastic finish on it and it's just a really good quality item. The inches are marked in black and the centimetres are marked in white on the opposite side. The final piece of equipment are finishing needles. The packs that I've pulled together have four sizes in them. Three of them are metal tapestry needles manufactured in France and they come in sizes 14, 18 and 20. So that will do anything from a lace weight up to a chunkier yarn. Inside the pack I've also included a large plastic wool needle and that's really good for those super chunky projects and also for kids to use and that one is manufactured in China. That's all of the equipment that I use for blocking. I keep them together so whenever I'm doing a load of blocking everything's all there ready to go and I'm not wasting time trying to find where my needles are or where my pins are. I always get asked lots of questions on how to block items which is why I've uploaded this demonstration video. I hope you find it useful. Thank you.